Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jenna Redfield and today I'm starting a four part series on automation within Notion. I'm super excited about this because I've realized lately that Notion, what I really want from it is to automate certain parts of my life and be able to track and analyze certain pieces of data that I personally have never really tracked before but want to. So part one today, we're gonna to be talking about how to use something called tally forms to actually input uh, you know, specific text or things that people fill out in a form, or you can actually do it yourself inside of Notion. Part two, we're gonna be talking about how to automate different apps using things like Zapier and automate.io. And then eventually we're gonna be doing one on specifically food and fitness, which I'm super excited about. That's coming uh, down the road. And then part three, we're gonna be talking specifically about how to use Amazon Alexa with Notion, which I found some really cool hacks for that. And then part four, we're actually gonna be talking about how to use Apple and iPhone shortcuts with Notion. So those are four things that I've just started learning a ton about and I'm really fascinated by and I don't see a ton of content on. I think they're super helpful for everyone, even if you're not a business owner, even if you don't do marketing like I do. I feel like a lot of my tips and tools are dedicated towards that, but actually a lot of the stuff I'm gonna be talking about today can apply to anyone. So let's just get into it. I wanna show you guys what Tally's all about. Uh, make sure to subscribe and make sure to follow along for my four part series. This is going to come once a week. So I believe I'm going to do it for four weeks. So stay tuned, make sure to subscribe for more episodes of this series, and then I'll be doing some other stuff after. Okay. So I wanted to walk through how I use Tally. So Tally is a free form software, similar to something like Google forms. But what's cool is it's actually made on the same system that Notion is. So it's very Notion friendly and it's literally, you can go directly into Notion. You don't even have to use Zapier, which I've, that was why I've been using Tally for months and months and months. So I want to show you guys specifically some of the ideas that I've had for the forms. Some of the things I've had in the past is I actually have an online directory. And so when people sign up for the directory, I've only been using this one, you know, a couple months, but basically what I can do is I can actually connect it with Notion and actually auto populate my directory. So basically I'll show you guys in a second how you can kind of connect and, and sort of set that up. You can also set up things like feedback forms. And then these are ones that I've actually set up internally, which I'll show you guys. So like for example, the grocery store item, actually I'll just get to that so that you guys can kind of see how this works. So one of the first things that you have to do is you have to make sure that you are signed in with Notion when you are setting up a tally form. So actually, let's just go into this. In order to edit something, you're actually going to turn it to this page. So this is basically the form fill out page and you can click insert and it basically has all of these options. What's cool about it is that it's very similar to Notion, so you can actually do the forward slash as well if you wanted to, and then it actually just puts a bunch of inputs in here. So for me, one of the things that always happened is I'd have an item that I need to buy and I wanted to quickly add it to my grocery list and have it be filtered, but not have to have me go all the way into that database and find it and go to the spe specific thing. I wanted a quick way to add a grocery store item that I haven't had in my list before. Maybe I saw a recipe online and I hadn't heard of that ingredient, so I wanted to add it quickly to my grocery list. So for this one, I added the item name with, for this I added, and I obviously make it, you can make it required or not. So for this one, I actually did the short answer, which basically is like text. I added the status to be grocery list because there's different statuses within my groceries. I have one that's like out of stock, in stock. So basically the status is automatically added to grocery list. And then I can select the store that I want to uh, shop at. So these are the five that I've gone to most often. Now I've published this, so I'm going to click publish, but really this is the part where you have to work with Notion. So you go to integrations and they have an option to sync to your Notion database. It has all these other ones as well. So you're going to go into here. You just basically have to set it up. And now what it's going to do is it's actually going to try to find different databases that you've connected with. So for example, right now it's selecting my groceries database. And the reason that it's able to find that is because I've set up notion to be able to connect to tally. So let's go to my groceries database, which is, let's see if I can find that. So if I scroll all the way down to my meal planning, if I go into my grocery list items, you'll see it actually right here. So this is what the tally form looks like. So 
inside of here, if I open this page, so this is my grocery database. In order for this to connect to Tally, I have to click share. And then you see how I have it here? You click invite and then it should pop up. If it's not, or like if it's there, if you've, you've set it up, linking Tally and Notion within Tally. So basically I selected Tally both times and that is how I was able to basically sync this specific database with Tally. Now I have to select that database when I go back. So I have a bunch of other ones, but basically I found the groceries database. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna map the properties. So for that first item thing that I said, which you know it shows it right here, item, I'm gonna select the name because that is also a text option inside of Notion. They have to be the same type. So for status, which is a select option, I found status. So there was different options, but basically it's telling me whatever I enter into the status part of the form, it's gonna enter that into Notion. And then the last one, store, is store. The nice thing is you don't have to actually add all of the options in this part because Notion already knows what the options are, especially for the ones that are the select. As long as they match up, if it's the, ex you have to spell it and, and put it the exact same. Um, you can also add page content. I don't usually do that, but then I click save changes. So now I have this grocery store form that I have. It's got like three questions. Now, there's a couple ways you can actually set this up. You can actually, if I just click on copy and open this in a new window, you will see that it's just the straight up form. So you can actually, you know, bookmark this or whatever, have this be your form. But what I found is actually more helpful is embedding it back inside of Notion. So you're gonna go down to where it says embed form. This actually just came up today. This is a brand new, now you can have a pop-up in the corner, which is so cool. But I usually just use the standard embed. You can actually, oh, this is new, interesting. <laughs> you can actually, usually I just click get the code and then it's an iframe. So you're gonna copy that over there. Looks like now you can actually customize a little bit more. This is actually new within the last like week. But basically I just copied that and then I go back into, let's see if I go here. So basically what I did here was I pasted that. So that's exactly what I pasted. I'll just show you guys again. Go to embed and then paste that and then you'll see it pop up again. So basically the same form. But what's cool about it is, now, first of all, I made this a synced block so I can have this on multiple pages. But you can see I can, if I think of a grocery item, I don't have to go all the way down here and like open up and like start a new one and have all these things to fill out. This is a quick add option. It's a quick add option, pull this down. But basically that's how you can do it for any database in your system and have the actual form embedded. I'm gonna show you guys what I do on my homepage. So if I scroll down, I've showed you guys this a little bit, but I now have the option to add my daily tasks. So I have a daily tasks form. If I have a quick item I need to do, I can add it here and then the priority, the status. So let's just show you guys. So um, film video, uh, it's a priority one. It's active and then I would not select done. Actually, I think you're supposed to select done. I'm trying to remember exactly what I did. But you will now see, so I was able to quickly add it into my to-do list and I can obviously change the settings later. I just added the basic ones, which is, you know, the status is active. Obviously you can add more to the form if you want to have it, but I like to add quick items. I do this also with things like content creation. So if I have a content idea, I've also created a form for that and then it automatically gets sent to my content database. So if I'm like, oh, I have an idea for something, instead of just putting it in my Apple notes like I've usually done, I would select the channel and then obviously set it to potential ideas and submit it. And then it automatically gets added to my pipeline. So this is how I use tally forms. Also, if you have somebody else submitting content, it'll do the exact same thing. Whatever you have them fill out, it will automatically populate all of those cells. So I hope that this was helpful. I think I got really excited about this because I was like, I was trying to find a way to quickly add items to Notion in a database and tally forms are perfect for this. So if you're like me and you just have a crazy random idea and you want a place to put it, 
do this. It's actually very simple to set up once you figure it out. Tally forms are great. I absolutely love them. I love that it's free. So hope you guys enjoy this. Next time we'll be talking a little bit more about Zapier and how to connect apps and automate other apps, maybe not Tally, but other things like maybe your YouTube channel or other things like Instagram. I literally have set all that up recently and I'm really excited about it. So hope that you guys like this video and I'll talk to you next time.